doing, Aaron? Fans, welcome back to IPW Weekly Recap right here on UPN 44. And this is the start of our second big season. Ron, we saw at the beginning you're promising a big, big surprise in our main event. Once again, the hardcore giant Ron Nemi, the leader of 911 Incorporated, got a big surprise for the fans of IPW. Mike and Todd Shane scheduled to defend the NWA Florida Tag Team titles against the future of wrestling's The Vandals. But I got a big surprise for The Vandals and for the fans. Okay, well, that's coming up on our main event, fans. But coming up first, it's a hair versus hair versus career match. The referee, Richie Rich, Devin Nash, and Don Juan DeSanto all putting something very, very important to them on the line here tonight. This is as big as the match from 1980, where David Coverdale from White Snake wrestled Kip Winger from Winger, and they put their hairs on the line versus Udo Dirk Schneider from Accept's career. This is going to be insane. It's nothing like that at all. Yeah, it is, actually. <laughs> All right, fans, this is a big hair versus hair versus career match. These three guys have been at each other's throats for months now. Coming out first, putting his career on the line, it's Don Juan DeSanto. Followed very closely by everybody's favorite wrestling referee, Richie Rich. The mullet, Richie Rich, somebody that wasn't happy enough to stay as one of the top referees in the business. He decided he was a wrestler, and he has done everything he can to get under the skin of that man. Devin Nash and Don Juan DeSanto hates both of them equally. And your special referee for this match, he's gotten into it with Devin Nash as well. It's some honest one, Eddie Edwards. The commissioner of IPW, the honest one, Eddie Edwards, making his return to the ring in IPW as a referee for this very important and pivotal match. All right, you see Devin Nash there throwing the chair at Richie Rich. He's been punching those chairs into people's noggins as of late. You see his fist all taped up. Sometimes I think he might hurt his hands as much as he hurts the other guy. But when they're the one laying there knocked out, that doesn't really matter. Eddie Edwards was talking to me before this match, and there's no love lost between Eddie Edwards and Don Juan DeSanto. It all goes back to a time over at Extra Innings Ballpark Cafe where they were feuding over one rat and three pitchers up here. And ever since that night, it's never been the same. So watch Eddie Edwards. He's usually one to call it right down the middle, but I don't know about tonight. A big double clothesline by Don Juan DeSanto and Devin Nash on Richie Rich. Figure take this referee guy out early. You gotta wonder what the strategy of these guys is gonna be. It's a first pinfall match, but all these guys guys hate each other so much, you know they're going to be the one to get the pinfall. Are they going to help each other out and not lose, or is everybody going to go for the glory? Big hit toss by Devin Nash, and you got it exactly right, Aaron. What is, the, what is the motive? What is the game plan when it comes to a match like this? And who in the hell puts their career on the line against somebody else's hair? This reminds me of Piroff versus Lismark Jr. from back in 1987 in AAA down in Ron, Tijuana. you don't know anything about AAA. I like to act like I do. The, the car company, perhaps. The guys that come and tow your car, but not the wrestling group. But I tell you what, Devin Nash, Richie Rich right now, both in there in the corner with Don Juan DeSanto. Devin Nash just clubs both their heads together. You want to know why he put his career on the line against the hair of these guys? Because he knows both of these individuals have been growing their hair for years. Devin Nash plays with it like a little girl sometimes. Richie Rich is known as the mullet. These guys, their hair every bit as important to them as Don Juan's career is to him. Their hair is as important to them as Kip Winger's hair was to him back in wow. 1986. Let's not exaggerate. Okay, I'm, I'm pulling it out of proportion a little bit. Now you see Devin Nash taking those big hands and absolutely lighting up the mullet Richie Rich, but Don Juan DeSanto fires back. You talk about stiff. This guy looking like an Oompa Loompa in the middle of the ring doesn't care who it is that he takes out. He's trying to save his career and prove a point and shave their heads bald. There you see, he's lifting up the shirt to chop Richie Rich, but Richie Rich comes double padded with the shirts there. Yeah, he comes in double padded. That's a J.C. Penny shirt that he has right underneath that Sears undergarment. And but Devin Nash taps him on the chest and says, hello. Hi, I'm right here. Let me brush across your chest after Don Juan DeSanto just lit you up. That's more of an insult than absolutely ripping the guy apart. Coming over there and basically caressing or petting him and coming over and stealing the pin. <laughs> Poked in the eyes, Roddy Piper style. All right, Three Stooges style, as I like to call it. And there, what I, that's what I'm talking about. If Richie Rich had gotten pinned right there, Don Juan DeSanto wouldn't lose his career. Devin Nash wouldn't lose his hair. But Don Juan DeSanto is not going to let Devin Nash get the pinfall if he can help it. Now the Florida WrestlePlex has been re-upped. Our lease has been re-signed for another two years for an option for another two. We may actually be here for another four years, but you can count on the WrestlePlex hosting some of the best matches and some of the best shows overall for two more years. Thanks to you, the fans of IPW, we're going to be here for a long time to come. And in addition, unlike a lot of other wrestling groups out there, IPW television show is going nowhere. 
what the hell is Dawan DeSanto doing? Here he is, comes over, some nice fancy footwork. He can cut a rug, unlike anybody this side of Skandar Akbar. In the moment, Richie Rich steals the page right out of the book of Devin Nash and tries to steal the pin. But Dawan DeSanto has the presence of mind of hooking the foot of Richie Rich and pulling him off of the carcass of Devin Nash. Tell you what, Devin Nash nearly lost his hair twice in a row right there, but because of the greed of these other two guys, he's still in this match, and he's going for the chair, Nimi. He goes for the chair. That's his. It ain't even a secret weapon. He makes it obvious. He's going to throw it right into the face of somebody and absolutely knock him out. You see Don Juan DeSanto throwing out what, like, last week's sack of potatoes. Tell you what, Eddie Edwards had told Devin Nash he couldn't use the chair shot anymore. There were going to be fines and suspensions, but once he turned it on him, he decided he'd be better off let Devin Nash get in the ring and let somebody else turn the chair against him. And there you see some of our great fans holding up signs. And that was Don Juan DeSanto. That wasn't one of the great fans, you idiots. And there's a huge DDT on Devin Nash. Absolutely levels the bullet, Richie Rich. And here comes Don Juan DeSanto to push off Devin. One, two, come on. Oh, my God, this is a hot and a heavy match. And now Richie Rich nearly loses his hair on two separate occasions, but both the other guys break it up. The hatred for these guys uh, that they have for each other runs obviously very, very deep. And that's why they're tearing each other apart like this. You don't always see guys that aren't in a title match, that aren't in a headlining match, going at it this hard. But with three, three guys, you're going to get a hard effort every single time. Don Juan DeSanto brings the best he's got every single time. He is the lesser evil. He's the former partner of the former television champion, Dr. Harrison. And here he comes off with a huge spear on the mullet, Richie Rich. That's got to be it. Eddie Edwards is in the corner, taking it easy. I don't think he's moved three steps during this entire match. He doesn't have the fire and intestinal power to start Stevens. Oh, my God, look at that huge boot to the face of Don Juan DeSanto. One, two, two. Oh, oh, see, I don't know about Eddie. I'm watching him. I said that he's got heat with Don Juan DeSanto. That count appeared to be a little bit slow there. Is there a little bit of dissension in the Eddie Edwards, Devin Nash camp? I tell you, Eddie Edwards has been spending so much time being editor guy, computer guy, and commissioner guy. Maybe he's just a bit blown up. He might be blown up. He's usually used to sitting in front of the cube computer and editing these great IPW television shows in between looking at hardcore porn. Well, I would say maybe he looks at the hardcore porn in between editing just to give him credit and so his wife doesn't get a bit angry. Hey, see, don't be blowing his cover. That's Eddie Edwards, the Bachelor of Champions. And you're all here blowing his cover, but he's in there in one of the most important matches that we've seen in some time. We got the long flowing locks of Devin Nash on the line. Did I actually just say that out loud? Well, she did. Unfortunately, I did. You see Don Juan DeSanto going to the top rope, setting up Devin Nash with a huge moonsault, which he misses uncharacteristically and crashes onto the top of the screen. Very, very impressive moonsault by Don Juan DeSanto, shades of Vader, going up to the top rope. People look at this guy, you wouldn't think he was that agile, but he hasn't gotten as far as he has an IPW. He's being one hell of a wrestler and a big stunner by Richie Rich. This should be it, folks. The mullet, one, two. Come on, mullet. He hits him with a big stunner. September 7th, right here at the Florida WrestleFlex. We got a huge night of wrestling again, Aaron. This is the greatest thing about IPW. The television is a great show. You get to see some of the best action you can, but you don't get to see the matches in its entirety. You need to be at the WrestleFlex. Devin Nash tosses it on a chair as though it was a hot potato itself. He hits the chair, breaks another of his knuckles. That makes it four. Stunner. Big stunner by the mullet. Come on, get down ready. One, two, three. That's it for the career of Don Juan DeSanto. The hair, unfortunately, of Devin Nash and the mullet stays intact. He said that he was going to retire for sure. He wasn't going to come back in a Midnight Rider yellow dog gimmick. He wasn't going to go wrestle somewhere else. If he keeps his word for all intents and purposes, the career of Don Juan DeSanto is finished. You go to highspots.com, you can purchase this entire show in its entirety. They got a sale right now. Three IPW hardcore wrestling tapes in their entirety for only $35. There's Devin Nash. He hasn't had enough of the mullet. He boots him right in the gullet and drops him in the DDT. Shannon Rose looks like he's soiled himself at ringside. He's very upset, Aaron. Eddie Edwards is asking, where are the Diamond Dolls girl this week, Shannon? You only have one job. That's to get the girls here. You didn't do your job. Shannon, I tell you what, if you don't start acting right, you're going to be out of here. He said a lot more stuff, but fans, we'll be back. Bye. 
show the steel cage on Sports Radio 1010 The Team. I'm the Puss, and this is the hardcore giant Ron Mimi. And of course, this is our producer, the Porn Object. Join us Saturdays at 11 on Sports Radio 1010 The Team. We're the home of the Bucks, the now IPW Hardcore Professional Wrestling. It's every Saturday at 11 on Sports Radio 1010 The, the Team. team. Well, I guess we have to say bye-bye to Don Juan DeSanto. His career is over. Personally, I don't want to see Richie Rich get that mullet cut, but I wouldn't mind seeing Devin Nash going around bald. Don Juan DeSanto might be gone from IPW Hardcore Wrestling, but the spirit lives on with the other half of the dancing DeSanto brothers, Pete Cannon, because he's still right here in IPW Hardcore Wrestling. You know, Aaron? The landscape of the professional wrestling business changes week after week, month after month. Some people like Don Juan DeSanto want to put their careers on the line. Some promoters want to come around and shoot their mouth off and stick their foot right in their mouth. Some people, from what I understand, their promotions have been dropped from their national television contract. <laughs> Unless, of course, you include the Urban Television Network. I don't know if we want to include that, Ronnie. No, but I've been meaning to ask you about that, Aaron. <sighs> That's bad. <laughs> that might be low, but NWA Wildside got nothing on IPW. This is just the beginning of the future. All right, fans, this match was supposed to be for the NWA Florida Tag Team titles. There you see your would-be challengers, the Vandals, representing FOW. But Ron Nemi and Mike Shane are about to come out, and they've got a big surprise for these guys. Unfortunately, Todd Shane was out with the torn MCL. He's out for four to six weeks, but Mike Shane and the hardcore giant Ron Nemi, we're not gonna take the night off just because our partner is out injured. Ron Nemi has a big surprise for FOW's, the Vandals. Fans, a big name in WCW and Raven's Flock. Before that, he competed over in FMW in Japan with the likes of Sabu, the original Sheik, and Mike Awesome when he was the Gladiator. This guy, by no means a rookie in the ring, and I gotta give you credit, Ronini, a pretty good compliment to Mike Shane. Mike Shane and Horace Hogan had never even worked together before tonight. They've been on some of the same cards in the past, but they have never teamed up and they've never wrestled against each other. And they come out here absolutely tearing the place apart. Horace, like a house of fire, destroying the Vandals, and Mike Shane makes sure to get in there and not let the Vandals forget who is one of the half of the number one tag team on the independent scene today. That is Mike Shane of the Shane Brothers. And you see right there, Mike Shane and Horace Hogan, they cleared out the Vandals a few minutes ago. They don't look like they want to get back in the ring, but referee gentleman Jim Stretch Bragg told them they better get back in right now. Jim Bragg, in at 78 years old, one of the best talents in the entire business. Sure, he's a geriatric. Sure, he's been collecting Social Security for 13 years, but the truth is, is that he can hang in there with the best of them. And he's in there with four of the most athletic. 
athletic, one of the fastest wrestlers in the business today. Horace Hogan, nobody wants to give the guy credit. They want to say he come in here and take it easy and make a name for himself off of his uncle. They want to say that's all he did in Japan was work the hardcore style. I'm here to tell you Horace Hogan is one of the toughest individuals, and you see him with that reverse elbow right to the jaw of Vandal number two. Absolutely levels him. And he tags Mike Shane and immediately some good tag team teamwork going on between Horace and Mike Shane. That's what happens when you put two veterans in the ring together. They made it a team together before, but both guys very, very adept at what they do in the square circle, as you see with that double underarm suplex right there. Mike Shane absolutely tearing apart Vandal number two. It's been a tough year for Todd Shane with injuries. He's had, I think, almost four months he's been out of the ring this year due to different injuries, and you see the Vandals firing back with a big drop kick, sends Mike Shane to the corner, who comes off with a reverse elbow of his own, but gets met with a big arm drag. Mike Shane, he's in there with the Vandals. They are, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, former FOW Tag Team Champions. They've made a big name for themselves down in Miami, and now they're up here in this part of Florida, making a name for themselves in IPW, which they know. You make a name for yourself here, you are making a name for yourself nationwide. The Vandals may not be the current FOW Tag Team Champions, but most fans down there still consider them the number one team in the area, the hottest, the most popular young team from FOW, but they're having trouble with Mike Shane. And just as I say that, Vandal number one, laying the boots into Mike Shane like there's no tomorrow. The tag team scene is really heated up here once again in IPW, Aaron. You've got the Vandals coming in from FOW, and you've got the Shane brothers. But the truth is, September 7th at the WrestleFlex, you got the Strong Brothers who claim to be the number one one brother tag team in the business. They are. They are the current IPW tag team champions, and they're going to be taking on the independent dream team of Naturally Marvelous. That's Scoot Andrews and Mike Sullivan. Naturally Marvelous. They've been making a big name for themselves as a tag team. They obviously already made a big name for themselves individually. Now they're going to go for that tag team goal. Mike Sullivan, he's held that goal before. Scoot Andrews never has. He wants to add that to his arsenal. You got the St. Pete Times. We're here at the Florida WrestlePlex on this night. They know where the action is. They know what the hottest product in the entertainment business right now in Florida is. They know it's IPW Hardcore. There's Horace Holman absolutely leveling the Vandals number one and number two. All, all also known in FOW as Ricky and Tommy, here they're number one and number two. But Horace leveled them both with boots, and he gets nailed with a big suplex. You gotta give the Vandals credit, man. They're in there with this so-called worldwide superstar, and they're in there with the big man himself, the vanilla gorilla Mike Shane, and they're not laying down for nobody. They're taking it right to these two monsters. They may not be a regular IPW tag team, but nobody said the Vandals would not be a great, great tag team competition. They've held titles in the past. They've taken many of our tag teams to the limit on several occasions, and right now they have the advantage on one horse Hogan. I was mentioning earlier that the St. Pete Times were here covering this huge event. The fans of IPW have demanded. They demand that we get the press that we deserve. We demand that people like the St. Pete Times and the Tampa Tribune and the Weekly Planet and everybody come down here and give their just due. The St. St. Pete Times stepped to the plate, and if you keep your eyes open for the St. Pete Times, there's going to be a huge article on IPW Hardcore Wrestling in the very new future. I'll tell you what, that's a very close near fall right there on Horace Hogan. Very near, but he was able to get the shoulder up. He didn't quite have Horace Hogan beaten up enough for the pinfall, but they're doing great tag team work. They're keeping the man in their own corner, and they're taking advantage. But now here comes back Horace Hogan. Great back and forth action in this match, Ron. This is a hell of a technical match, man. You wouldn't think when you think of Horace Hogan and Mike Shane against the Vandals, you'd be thinking about some huge brawl, and you think about all kinds of crazy flying all over the place action. This has been an unbelievable technical contest. They're near a counter for every single counter. They're one up in each other. They want to show who the best technical wrestler is. When Horace wrestled for FMW over in Japan, he was known as Horace Boulder, and he teamed up with the Gladiator, currently known as Mike Awesome, WWE superstar. They feuded with the likes of Hayabusa, Atsushi Onita, Tarzan Goto, Mr. Ganasaki, everybody FMW built their name upon, had to go through Horace Hogan and the Gladiator, Mike Awesome. Those two were two of the most violent individuals and two of the most technically gifted foreigners that went to Japan. We're happy to have Horace right here bringing that worldwide experience right to the rings of the WrestleFlex. Horace Hogan coming back with some punches to the head of Vandal number one. Shoots him off the rope, and no, oh, big DDT by the Vandal. Like I said, these guys, no pushovers, two, almost a three count there. People might wonder what the motivation is for the Vandals. They don't have tag team gold on the line, but they know that, A, if they win this match, they pick a guy like Horace Hogan, a big, big name in the wrestling business, and they also know a win here could very well catapult them to a shot at the most coveted tag team 
team titles in all of Florida, the IPW Tag Team Belts. They were in line for this shot for the NWA Florida Tag Team titles on this very night, but because of the injury to Todd Shane, they lost that title shot. They've been studying the tapes. Look at that. They've been studying the tapes of Mike and Todd Shane, but once again, even when he's down and out, he's got the presence of mind to roll out of the way when Horace Hogan is coming off with one of the biggest leg drops in the entire business. This guy's got to be like seven foot three. His leg stretches completely across the ring, and this kid is smart enough to get the hell out of the way because that would have been the end of the Vandals. Yes, it would have, but they're, like you said, they're very smart. They're coming back. Forrest and Mike Shane were taking over this match at the very beginning, but the last few minutes have been all Vandals. Forrest really, really needs to get a tag into Mike Shane or they're going to lose this tag team encounter. I really don't know what Horace was thinking. Obviously, Mike Shane, look at that huge choke slam polar bomb. Levels up. He takes him out. Now use your head, Horace. Crawl over there and tag in Mike Shane. He's obviously the talented individual of the team. That's all you are is the brute strength, and I'm the looks of this combination. Get over there and tag him in so we can win this match. I was getting pretty frustrated at this point. You can see me over there. Tell him, Horace, get your ass over there. Tag in Mike Shane and get out of the ring. You're humiliating me. Leave it to Ron Nimi to put a guy over like nobody's business at the beginning of the match. And just as things start to go wrong, bury him to cover his own ass. You see that huge suplex by Mike Shane, and he gives Vandal number one and a half, one for his own troubles. He's throwing them all over the ring like nobody's business. And there he's hooking them, and Horace comes in, oh. and he levels Mike Shane with a boot and knocks himself out of his ass. Come on, Horace. What the hell are you doing? No, he's jumping around, flailing around the ring like a fish out of water. He was a little bit late on the save, but at least he made the attempt. I think the fact that these guys don't team together regularly is starting to show a little bit when they're wrestling guys that tag together all the time, like the Vandals. Oh, oh. my God, come on. Horace, get in there and save this guy. He's over in the corner. He's selling like he just had his head in the back of his neck kicked off. But it's Mike Shane and they're taking the punishment. There you go, Horace. Get him out of the ring. Help Mike Shane up. Oh, and he's climbing out like, again, what's he thinking? Mike Shane's in the ring, taking business into his oh, own this hands. Should be Come it. on, Mike. Take him out. You obviously got no help whatsoever. He hooks the ropes, comes off with a clothesline, misses by a mile. Hooks him for the big Mike Shane Vanilla Gorilla face buster. TKO. Game, and that's got to be it. And it is. That's it. Your winners of the match, Horace Hogan and Mike Shane. It's about time Mike Shane could get in there with all Horace Hogan getting his way so he can finish off the Vandals. And he calls Ron Nemi, the hardcore giant, myself in the ring. And I'm like, what the hell is Horace doing? Mike, you have to win this match on your own. I thought I was helping you out getting his partner. I didn't know I was getting some dead weight that was in there just to steal the spotlight. Say what, Ron, a lot of people already know what happened here, what's about to happen. We didn't want to give it away during the match. I'm just going to watch. What the what, what's Horace doing? Just because I claimed that he was the only reason he was booked is because we're going, oh my God, my neck is still in traction from that ridiculous power bomb. Horace Hogan lays me out and gets in the face of Mike Shane, and that was the worst idea he's had in a long time. September 7th, Mike Shane and Horace Hogan at the WrestlePlex. <laughs> How's the neck, brother? <laughs> How's the neck? The hardcore giant Ron Nemi brings in Horace Hogan, who tries to steal all the heat of Mike Shane, and then he ends up dropping me right on my neck, which is about the size of a pit bull. To injure this neck is almost impossible, but because of that power bomb by Horace Hogan, I haven't been all as satisfied all those women that are usually at their knees waiting on the hardcore giant week after week. Damn hey, the big fat ring rats do not count, Ron Nemi. I've tried to tell you that for years now. What does count is that September the 7th, right here at the Russellplex, Horace Hogan, Mike Shane, one-on-one, -on -one, revenge on the mind of Ron Nemi. The hardcore giant Ron Nemi and 911 Incorporated and Mike Shane are going to absolutely destroy Horace Hogan. Aaron Royal doesn't count the fat rats. He obviously doesn't have his priorities straight. They all count. Horace, because of you, I haven't been able to satisfy all their right, every Ron, need. I hate to interrupt you, but we got to go to clips for next week's show. Two big matches for next week. Get a preview of them right now. All right, fans, as we told you in studio, these are clips for next week, and as you can see, it's a lot of hardcore madness. Chaos and primeval once again, tearing each other from limb to limb. You got Death Row Jethro, the hardcore princess, and that idiot concession boy, somebody flying through the bleachers to their death at the WrestlePlex. It was insane. 
And right now, you see right from the hardcore action to great, great technical wrestling. When Billy Fize was champion, he would never defend against Agent Steel. Now that Agent Steel has the belt, he said, come on, Billy Fize, I'm going to show you I could have beaten you. You go from some of the sickest, most violent action in the entire business to some of the most technically sound and gifted wrestlers on the independent scene today. Billy Fize and Agent Steel next week.